Well, I like going hunting, just me, my hound, and my gun. Chasing them deer, rabbit, and squirrel, now that's my kind of fun. I like going fishing too, I'll go on any whim. Looking for the big bass, the puppy, and the brim. Just give me a wide open field to walk through. Give me an ocean so deep. I want to ride the longest river in the world, or maybe climb the highest mountain peak. I like going down to the fishing hole, my buddies and me and my old cane pole. Bake them hooks and wet them lines, it's life I love so fine. It's almost supper time, you'd think the world was mine. And now for today's outdoor adventure, here's Archie Phillips. Uh, well, folks, the early Indians or early people that roamed around this planet, uh, they had to depend on animals, plants, and fire to survive. And we've got some folks with her, us here today, Randall Jones, who is an excellent fire builder, and uh, Kenny Berry back here, who is pretty good on most anything to do with uh, bow making and arrows and flint making and, and how they did it. And they're going to share their expertise with us today on how the Indians made it out there in the early times. All right, Randall, uh, we've got a mullein plant that's nearly dead here now. What about the mullein? Well, the mullein is uh, it's just, this is the first year plant and uh, it'll throw up a stalk the second year that it's alive, but it's got this nice velvety big green leaf that are, uh, it's good for uh, making a tea out of. Some people uh, smoke the leaves to uh, get the mucus and to clear up con congestion. It gets the mucus flowing so you can like, get it like out of your body. Like people use uh, humidifiers today, that's what the Indians and all used back in them days. Yeah. All right, now right behind you here, uh, explain to them about this one now. Well, this is a second year plant and it's got, uh, it'll have a, uh, this is the flower stalk and have uh, greenish yellow flowers on it. Okay. And this is where all the seeds are now. Some of them may fall out if you shake it. But this stalk here is uh, got a real big pithy core in it and it's good for uh, making fires with a hand drill. Okay. Well, let's pull that up and take it with us. Okay. I'll crack it up like that. So that's one of your better fire building. Yeah, uh, mullen's probably the best you can get. Okay. All right, now right in, I'm gonna hold the mullein. Okay. Right here in front of us now. What's the deal on this plant? Now this is thistle. Uh, thistle is also edible when it's uh, at a younger stage than this, or when it's green. But the, uh, the flower heads here are good for wrapping, uh, fletching darts or blow guns. Blow gun dogs. Uh -huh. That's that's when they're you want them when they're real powdery, right? I mean, right. real fluffed out. Exactly. Not when they're opened and the downs going everywhere, but when it's right before that time. Yeah, it'll be in a bulb, and this they'll be purple, right? Uh huh. I got you. So this is gonna be our fire stick right here, right? Uh huh. All right. Now what we got right here, uh, Kenny? This is your wing down, and as you can see, it's got these little wing-like growths on the bark down through here, and. But once again, they grow out to the side, and you can you can get your bark for your cordage right down either the top or the bottom of this, and it'll strip off of here. And it's not quite as good on these older growths like this. Let me pick that up. See, it just ran just a little way, but you can get these young canes of it before it gets too big and gnarly like this is, and it'll strip off there and one good make it piece. some good cordage. Yeah. What else is this thing used for? Well, it's, uh, the wood is good for uh, bow drill fire making sets for the drill and the fire board. And, the, and for our hand drill, they make really good fire boards. All right, now what have you been doing over around that cedar tree or anything? Well, I'm I mean. gathering some tinder, and this is just the, the outer dead bark of the cedar. And you wanna, this cedar bark makes really good tinder. About the best, ain't it, Randy? Yeah, if you, uh, Tender, and, and when you're making friction fires, and making fires with the friction fire methods, uh, you, your tender is the most important ingredient because even though you get a coal, if you can't, don't have tender that's, uh, that's able to be blown into a flame from that coal, your coal is useless. So you gotta have good tender. And that's the best, ain't it? Uh-huh. Okay.
Uh, now out there, Archie, we got that big cottonwood tree growing. That's a mature cottonwood. And all along here, downwind from it is, is where this little saplings have sprung up mixed in with those willows there. And I like to tell people that the, it's ironic that your best fire starting woods grows in these wet places, these little old swampy areas, your willows, your cottonwoods, and that, that's the two best woods that you got. All right, now you're telling me that uh, that's what the leaf off of the cottonwood looks like. But what was you telling me about spring, how you can tell it? Yeah, in the spring and summer, these things will be a real light, bright green, but these veins in here will be red, pinkish colored. Mm -hmm. And on these smaller trees, they'll be great big. These leaves will be three or four times that big. They'll be that big? On the little ones. Yeah, you know, on like some varieties of oak, you'll see them little small oak trees mm -hmm. with huge leaves on I them. See. Well, they do the same way. And this cottonwood, so called because it's so soft. Uh, you can see where I took my thumbnail there and you can just make an imprint in it. And I was told when I first started doing friction fire that that's your first test. If you can make a, a print in it with your thumb, then that wood's soft enough to be suitable for fire making. Okay. And this is a dead limb off that mature tree and that's, that's the best place to find them. Find you a mature tree and just look around the bottom of it and good dead dry wood has fell off of it. And the willows are good too. Willows right? are good too. Okay. All right, uh, Kenneth, what you got right there now? All right, we got a willow tree growing down here. Of course, this has been pruned several times, and, and which is all the more better. It sent off even more shoots, uh, and it gives us more stuff to work with. Now, we've got part of it here that's dead and dried out. And see, this willow will naturally just split in half down there to give you a good fireboard. Uh-huh. You know, a flat side already done for you. And, uh, or you can keep it round and, and use your fire drill. This is also a, a good friction firewood, and we'll use that later. See, this is the yucca, and this is the long yucca stalk that comes off of the plant. And the stalk here has these uh, white petaled flowers that are edible. They have a bitter sweet taste to them, but you can just pick them off the plant and eat them. That, that's when they're, at what stage? That's when they're flowering. When they're flowering. Little flower okay. petals. But uh, the, the stalk here, when the the stalk has died um, is a great fireboard for friction fires, and it's also a great drill. For so it'll do both fire. of them, right? Uh, for hand drill, everything. I mean, this is this is almost the best stuff you could get uh, for a hand drill. It'd be up there with mullen. Okay. All right, we're gonna just pull these out, cut these out, right? Is that what we're gonna do with them? Yeah, mm -hmm. you can just cut okay. that off down at the bottom down there. Now this is uh, some of the cedar bark we got. And this is some of the downy seed heads that we just pushed into a ball. And we added some dog bait in there because it's good tender material too. And we'll just stick that in the middle of all this cedar bark because uh, it's like when you start a fire, uh, it's the same with this. You start out with something real small and then gradually you get bigger and coarser and stuff like Come on that. up with it, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. And like I said before, this, uh, your tender bundle is really the most important thing that you have. Okay. If you get a coal and you stick it in here and your tender's no good, you can't blow it into a flame, uh, everything that you've done is useless. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the hand drill. And all you uh, really need is uh, you look for a stalk, plant stalk is what I usually use. It has a pithy core in it, but the outside of the stalk is strong enough, when you drill it, it won't bust on you or come apart. I got you. Okay, this is mullen. This is a mullen we showed earlier. And this is a yucca drill. And this is a thistle drill. Okay. I'm gonna do a fire, or get a coal with a mullen in a few That's minutes. That's your favorite, isn't it? Yeah, mullen's just, uh, you can't beat it. Okay. You can't beat it. All right. But uh, this is a, you just go off and break a limb, a willow, and you could just use the willow limb as it is as a fireboard. But as you see, it's, it'll wobble, and most people have trouble with that. Okay, so what you do is flatten down both sides. And a lot of Indians did that. They flattened the sides down. Their Indians in South America and in the Southwest, all their fireboards were pretty much... Uh, flatten okay and you don't need a knife uh, you can just get a, a piece of flint or a flint flake and you 
start making a little hole up here in the board like this so your drill won't slip around and then you'll drill with your drill in the hole and create a little depression okay and after that you can get your little piece of flint or flake or even a piece of sandstone and just saw your notch in there now you put a notch in the depression you made because that's where all the heat is going to concentrate because that's where all the powder is going to concentrate that grinds off from the board and your drill so you just cut a little notch in there and it's actually just a little line going in there you don't want to make it too big because uh the uh sometimes these pithy plant stalks are do have a brittle outside and it'll catch and just splitter it apart i see because you're turning it so fast and hard you got it like you want it now yeah you don't really on a hand drill it's different from a bow drill i think and then you don't need a, a notch going in all the way because mm -hmm. of that what i just said you just need an escape route for the right, powder to for go the meal. I see. right see all the other notches in there aren't really that deep i see okay okay, okay. and right now try to get one going with uh now you left here you got a little chip of wood there so you want, you're gonna right if you were uh you want to keep your pieces that you're going to make the fire with off any damp area and this ground really damp so what you could do is get a piece of bark and pull it off a tree and use it lay it in there I right you. okay i'm going to use this piece when the coal falls there to transfer it into the tender i got you because okay. when you have a little board and you have a big tender bundle the you board's going to wobble yeah there you go okay and when you drill with the drill you're trying to you want to apply downward pressure and you want to keep the drill spinning at the same time and you got to remember most people have a dominant hand and so they'll just use one to the hand that they're that's the dominant uh -huh. with them like they're right hand or left hand you got to remember do both hands because you lose a rotation see if you just go like this i see it gets it going faster and what I try to do is lean down on the drill with my body weight, let my body weight handle the downward pressure and leaving my arms, my hands free to spin the drill. Okay, we'll just do it right now. Okay. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Boy, that's good smoke there. All right, there's a coal there already. Yeah, there's a coal. Now Randall can get a hand drill fire quicker than I can get one with a bow drill. Can, maybe that's faster than I can get one with a bow. <laughs> and that's the, the coal right, right there. Transfer that dude. And you'll leave it alone and let it grow a little bit. Yeah, it'll like so, congeal. Yeah. And if you take it out right away, the coal will probably break apart. I see. It'll fall out on you, but you stick it in there and tap it in there and cradle it like a baby. You want to make it grow, so blow a little soft on it. There you go. There's your there's fire. Your fire right there. There's your fire, fire all over you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this fire method is, is called the bow and spindle method. Do the, we cut the little groove in the side right here, and you start your hole. Now this, this, this fireboard's probably good for a dozen more fires, and it'll finally wear out through that hole, just like that did. Now I'll start another hole there and right on down through there. You got a thing that goes in your hand. The Indians used all sorts of things. They used a piece of a bone. They used a calisite stone different things up in there you don't want friction here you want it right here so we're going to set up down here got the same cedar tender that we had before and uh we simply put the bow in the groove and it could you could have a little tree limb or you could use uh a uh 
some kind of your uh, buckskin that you had prepared or whatever. Spindle goes on top, hand right here, and then we'll just start our action right here. And the coals are building up in the sides there. I like to pump it till I get a good green looking smoke in there. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, we got it. I tap it right into the tender. Yeah, here's your fire. And that's the spindle method. And that would simply be thrown up under your, uh, any of your fire and should come on up with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, now the reason for the friction fires, flint and steel, you hear about making a fire with flint and steel and other kind of things, but you had to have some modern day man's tools, which would be the, the steel, right. to make it happen. And uh, with this way, you can always start with nothing, boom, you got a fire. That's right. I'm gonna burn this little piece of cloth right here for the next step here, which is uh, after the Indian came in contact with the uh, with white man, he developed another fire method. We're gonna show you here in just a minute. What I'm doing is charring this cloth right here. We get it good and charred. That could be any kind of cotton-based type of cloth. And then I'm simply gonna put it out it's all the way out. Then we would take a just a simple piece of uh, black flint and a little more tender. And uh, the way I do that is hold it for me. Okay. It's just almost like a cigarette lighter. You just uh, put your flint right up under your finger right there and you Put your flint right here and you just strike off a, there, got one little spark down in there. Now I just take glow. my tender. And there's your fire. Now, the, what, the nice part about the flint and steel fire is this. Once you had steel and cotton products, you could take your, you could take your tinder, your flint and your steel, and your cotton, put them in a little tinder box. That's what they used to call them, tinder boxes. And they would, uh, that would be your fire making kit, be just like that right there. And then you could, anytime you needed a, a fire, all you had to do was just uh, get it out. <laughs> and I can't even get the stuff out. It's uh, burned so nicely. But you see how quick it will spread on a mm -hmm. on a uh, on that real good charge. It won't even go out. Look at yeah. that. Or a piece of punky wood is what yeah, I keep in mind. Yeah, punky wood. Yeah, punky wood. And then works. there's there's your fire kit. And uh, this came into being probably around sixteen, seventeen hundred in this country. Well, folks, you've seen one of the most difficult processes that I've ever seen on fire building is the drill is a drill type fire building. And uh, Kenny, you boys do seminars and lectures and all that for people. And uh, we're going to have your name and phone number here at the end of the show. So any of them that wants to get up with you, y'all about the most knowledgeable pe people I've ever been with on uh, how the early men did it. You've been at it a long time, haven't you? Yeah, we, we've done a lot of research, a lot of trial and error on this. and. Uh... A lot of traveling, a lot of working on it, but uh, we'd love to spread it around and, and teach it to anybody who would like to learn it. Y'all sure excellent on the cordages and the foods and the fire building skills and the airheads and the, just everything. And of course, we got us 
we've got a fire here going. We've got a spark right there, and uh, uh, Randy knows his business with that. Thing. Oh yeah, he's good now, with that. I can do it with a bow, but this is the most difficult of all right there is, uh, is getting it with a bow. And you folks have seen it done. Now, you hear people say, well, uh, you know, you always hear about starting a fire with two sticks. Well, there you see it right here. You've got a uh, mullen. Thistle. Now, this is thistle. Okay, mm -hmm. we've got a thistle, and we've got the willow fireboard. There's the spark right there. And uh, Randy going to drop it right in his uh, cedar, little, little, little cedar. We call it bird's nest or your tinder pile and uh, have your fire up there. So, you know, let's think about some of our folks years ago and how they made it. And, you know, we thought it was an impossible how they survived, but they were they were very ingenious people, weren't they? Oh, uh, yeah. It, it's still possible to do it today. Yeah, and, you know, uh, it's, a, it's good to go back and, and get with people like y'all that are skilled to show the young folks and the older folks uh, how people made it in the state of Alabama or anywhere else in this country. And there's your fire and there's your smoke and that's there it is. That's it. I, that's the first one I've ever seen built with a hand bow. I've seen them in the movies, but that's the first I've ever seen built. And folks, uh, y'all stay uh, tuned again next week for some more outdoors with Archie Phillips. <laughs>